Hello and welcome to this video course on how to use WordPress Gutenberg editor. So we're going to go in depth. So if you don't know how to use the editor and you know a little bit, we're going to dive in a lot deeper. So this is video number one, which is the introduction. So let's talk about Gutenberg and a little bit about it. Gutenberg was created as more of a drag and drop dynamic editor. Now there are pros and cons. So I want to make sure that you are able to see both sides. Some of the pros include the following. Number one, it provides more screen space. Number two, it's more dynamic with blocks. And number three, blocks are fun to use. So when I talk about blocks, I'm talking about image blocks, audio blocks, and different types of blocks that fit different media. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. And what's cool about this is you can drag and drop them. You can move them around very, very easily. And number four, it also works great on mobile. Now the primary con or disadvantage is that although it's listed as beginner friendly, <laughs> the reality is that it has so many options that it can get really quite confusing. And that is why we will go over most of the important areas in this video course. With that said, I like to give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect. So this is video number one, obviously video number two, we're going to give you a quick overview of the user interface. Video number three, we're going to talk about the different types of blocks so that you're aware of the many blocks that are available to you. Video number four, we'll talk about using the sidebar, which is on the right hand side that pertains to each block. And number five, we'll talk about common blocks that are available to you. And of course, video number six, we'll talk about formatting blocks. So as you can see here, I'm breaking it up into simplified videos. I don't want to put all of these into one video to overwhelm you. All right. So video number seven, we'll talk about layout elements and video number eight. We'll talk about if you're not ready for Gutenberg and you do not like the editor after you've seen all of this, how do you go about disabling it? How do you go about reverting to the old classic editor. And this is a big thing. A lot of people do not like Gutenberg, so they prefer to go back to the classic editor. So we want to make sure that you have the options available to you if you choose to go down that route. And of course, last but not least, we've got video number nine, which is more editor options. In terms of getting started, it's pretty self-explanatory. All you need to have is a WordPress site with administrator access because we are going to log in to the WordPress administrator dashboard and I'll show you around. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're going to talk about a quick overview of the user interface. So before we jump in, I want to say that it's important to give you a quick overview of the Gutenberg editor so that you know exactly what to expect. You know how everything is broken down. You know how everything, where things are accessible and all of that. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to a WordPress dashboard and I'll show you around. Okay. So one thing I want to make note of is you should get access to a WordPress web hosting company if you are using WordPress. Because as you expand and you use WordPress more, WordPress will actually become slower if you are not using a WordPress host that have their servers that are basically set up for WordPress. There is a specific web host that I highly recommend called WPXhosting.com. And this is a site that I use and it's, they got fantastic support. A lot of times you can email them with WordPress related questions and they'll respond. Sometimes they'll log into your account and do it for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and log in and I'm going to find a test site that we can use. 
and we'll see you in the dashboard. Okay, so here we are at the WordPress administrator dashboard. What you wanna do is you wanna to go to a post or a page. It really doesn't matter what you use. So you can either go to posts, you can click add new, or you can go to all posts and find a post, an existing post, and edit that. It doesn't really matter. So we are going to create a post in terms of this example. And to do that, we'll click on add new. Okay, so the way things are laid out is once you have gotten in here, this right here is the Gutenberg editor. Now, when you click on the plus sign here, you're gonna be able to see blocks. So as you can see, there are many different types of blocks, which we will go into every single block in the future videos. But for now, this is where the blocks are. Now you can click this here, and this will give you the content structure. So it's kind of like, if you think about it, Microsoft Word, when they tell you how many words you have, how many paragraphs you have, but in this case, how many blocks you have and how many headings you have. So this is really great if you're wondering, okay, how many words do I have? And if you're writing an article and you're trying to stick with a certain amount of words, this is really great to have. And then of course we have this here, which is the block navigation. So as you begin to add more blocks, it will add those blocks here. So right now, as you can see, there is simply just a heading block right here. So all you have to do is type in the title. So title here, and then you can put the heading. So the title here will actually become your page title. And then the heading here will actually become your post or page. So in other words, if I name this title here and I click on publish, what's gonna happen is the permalinks, it will change to yourdomain.com slash title dash here. So if I had the word, this is a great day, this is a great day day, then what will happen is when I click publish, it'll create yourdomain.com slash this is a great day. All right. So that's what I mean by page title. And that's the difference between this and this. All right. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth because I don't want to overwhelm you. We're going to dive in at a later time. So if we move on over here, this is the sidebar. This allows you to control permalinks, categories, tags, and, and other features as well. And you'll begin to see as I begin to edit blocks and add blocks and all of that, the sidebar will actually change, all right? So this is a basic and brief overview of all the details. Now over here we have blocks. So if you click on block, uh, whatever block you select, like let's say for example, the heading here, you'll see the actual details here, all right? So that's it for now, we'll keep it simple and we'll move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back, this is video number three and we're gonna talk about understanding the types of blocks. So let's talk about the different types of blocks so that you can kind of get a bird's eye view of the options that are available to you, all right? So we'll cover all the sections, but we won't actually go in depth as much as we will in the future videos, all right? Okay, so if we return over here, to access the blocks, you will need to simply click on the circle with a plus. So click on here, and you'll see the most used blocks. So you can see they have paragraph, they have image, they have heading, they have gallery, they have lists, they have quote, they have file, they have cover, and they have audio. Now, these are just the most used. So a lot of these can actually be in some of these. Now, if you think about an editor and you think about the classic editor, there was only really so much that you could do. So the reason why they switched over to Gutenberg is it really expands the ability to add more content types 
add more media types with ease of use. And that was really the whole goal. So sometimes you start out with Gutenberg, it's really frustrating, but I guarantee if you finish it, you might really like it. So then we have common blocks. Then we have, as you can see here, uh, a lot of them are actually similar to the most used blocks. So these are common blocks. So you can see some media like audio, video, cover, file, gallery, list, and quote. So a lot that we actually went over earlier. And then of course you got formatting blocks. You've got code, classic, custom HTML, table, pull quote, pre-formatted, verse. And then of course you have layout elements. Then you have buttons, columns, media and text, more page break, separator, and spacer. So in other words, the layout elements allow you to move things around so that it looks better. And we have widgets, we have the short code, we have archives, calendar, latest posts, latest comments, categories, RSS, search, and tag cloud. And then of course we have embed. So this would be something that you would use if you have, say for example, a YouTube video. You could come here, you could click on the YouTube icon here and embed a video. So same with these other ones. You got embed, you have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you can embed these. So this is great to have, especially as you're trying to build your social media and trying to get people to your social media properties. So we've got Vimeo, which is a video hosting site, kind of similar to YouTube. We have Animoto, which is a video creation site. And we've got uh, a lot of other sites as well. So we're not going to dive too much into these, but these are more of the third party sites that you can use if you happen to have accounts for these. So if you have Reddit, you have Tumblr, you have Amazon Kindle, you could post these widgets and embeds here. So we pretty much covered most of blocks. Now, in terms of adding blocks, all right, so if we click here and we can edit things here, if you put your mouse over the bottom or even the top, you will see an additional plus sign. All right, so see that plus sign here? What that means is you can insert a block in between this block and this block. So if you just want to continue adding blocks down below, that's great, right? But if you're thinking, oh, I missed a block, I wanted to add an image between this block and this block, that allows you to do that. So if you think about the old classic editor, you would not really be able to do that as easily. You could uh, go down and grab the content and then move it around, but it, it would end up really becoming tedious. So the goal of this is to try and make your life a lot easier. Now, there is a full screen mode. If you click on the dot 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 here, you can click on full screen mode and that will basically expand it so that you can see the editor. You don't have to see the left sidebar or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we are going to keep it like this so that we don't really have anything like distracting us. All right. So as an example, if we click plus here and let's say that we want a list. So we can put a list here, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then we're thinking, okay, I want to add an additional block. So I'm going to click this here and I'll add a quote. This is a quote. Now, another thing to note is that if you want to move things around, you're going to see, and you put your mouse over the left hand side, you're gonna see these arrows. So if you press these arrows, it will move it down one block, or you can simply move this one down below this block, as you can see here. 
Now, what this is, this little six dots, it's the same as these, except for it's more of a kind of a drag friendly thing. So you can, as you can see here, I can just drag things around. So it's really not different. It's just the way that they've done it is differently. Okay, so let's say we want to add something else. So we're gonna we're gonna click here. So you can also click here if you want to, but this option gives you the ability to click here and add a block. And if you click over here, you can add a block as well. So you'll notice that it kind of gives you some flexibility on where you can click. So I could click here and I could click, let's say, We'll go to common blocks and we'll choose, let's say a gallery. So a gallery is basically a bunch of images that are showcased. So if you upload say 10 different videos, then you can organize them so that everyone can see them basically on a wall. What's nice about this is back in the day, you could create galleries, but it's a lot more simplified. So you can click media library, you can choose the photos that you want and select them. Now, as you can see here, you can also transform these blocks into an image, which is pretty cool. So if you have a bunch of gallery images already, but you're thinking, well, I wanna switch this to just a single image, you can do that as well. So in certain respects, you can even morph certain blocks into other blocks. So another thing is you can align. So you can align left, you can align center, and you can align right. Now, if you click on these dot, 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 this is basically more options. You can hide block settings, which are on the right-hand side. So if I click that, you can see that I'm able to see just the editor itself. So. If that's annoying me, I can literally remove that, but honestly, it really depends on you. So if you click show block settings, the right-hand sidebar will appear again. All right, so that's a little, little tweak. Now, if you wanna duplicate something that you have created, let's say we have a gallery and we really like the gallery, but we wanna add the gallery at the very bottom, we can do that as well. So to do that, you would simply click that block, click on the more options and click on duplicate. And as you can see, it has made a duplicate of that block. So if you wanna delete that, you can click remove block, All right? So again, more options, you can insert before or insert after. What that means is if you click it, you will insert a brand new block before or after. So like you, you're seeing here, there's a lot of options. You can either click here, you can either click here, or you can simply click on the block and click on insert before. You can also edit as HTML. So for those of you who are more advanced and you don't really like how things are laid out here, let's say I want to go to the quote section or maybe let's do a paragraph. So I'm gonna add a paragraph up here so let's add a paragraph. This is a paragraph. And let's say for example that I wanna add like a JavaScript code or a HTML code. What you do is you click on that block, click here, click edit as HTML, and you simply enter the HTML. And of course when you're done, you just click this and you click edit visually to go back to the visual editor. So the visual editor is basically kind of a, what you see is what you get. And this is more so that you can see it, what it looks like to the end user. And the HTML code is the code in the back. All right, so you can add reusable blocks. So you basically can create blocks that can be reused again and again. So think about these kind of like templates. So this could be like template one and you click save. All right. So if you click plus here 
and you go down to reusable right here, you can see that template one is here. So if we click on that, you're able to add that here. So this is very, very convenient, especially if you have certain elements that you like to repeat over and over and over again, and you want to go to a different post or a different page and add that specific element to that page without having to redo everything. All right. So that is very convenient. So that's that. We're not really going to go in too much depth over here because we'll go in more depth in a minute in terms of the blocks and the, the actual settings of the block. Now, if you go over here, if you click on add image or these are kind of like quick things. And a lot of times these here are elements that you have added in the past. So if you're the person who adds a lot of images, you could click just here, click add image. And there you go. So you simply, you can either upload the image or you can click on media library, or you can insert from a URL. So if you have an image that is already hosted, you can simply enter the URL here. So what's cool about Gutenberg is as you can see, it gives you several different options. So there's not really just one way of doing things. There are actually several ways of doing things. Now from a newbie standpoint, that might look complex because you might be thinking, why is this here? Why is this here? Why is this here? But the reality is it's trying to make things more convenient for you. So let's go further down and uh, we'll put this down here. We'll click plus. And the most used are not really the most used that other people use, but the most used that you use. So that's kind of nice because it really customizes the blocks for you. So as you begin to use it, it begins to get smarter and it knows what you're doing and it knows what you like to do. So if we scroll down further, these are the blocks here. And we'll go in more depth. I'm going to go in depth on the common blocks, the formatting blocks and the layout elements. But like I said, the widgets are a little bit more advanced, but short code is basically if you have a plugin and they give you a short code and they say, add the short code to your page. So if you were to do that, you click on short code and you would simply add the short code here. Now, back in the day when you had the classic editor, you would have to go into the editor. You would have to go into like either HTML view or sometimes view and add the short code there. So what this does, it allows you to kind of see this structure. Now, since we've added several blocks already, if we go back to the top under block navigation, we can actually see how our blocks are set up. So you can see that at the top, I've got heading, I've got quote, I've got two reusable blocks. I've got list, paragraph, gallery, image, and short code. Now, if I click on one of these, like let's say I'll click on list, it will go straight to that block. So as time goes on and you begin to add more blocks because maybe your page is very, very long and it has maybe 20 or 30 blocks, it's going to be a pain to actually have to scroll through it. So that feature in itself is very convenient as you can see here. So if I say, okay, uh, I just want to edit uh, really quickly the image right here. It'll go straight to the image. So that is really cool pro. So a lot of pros here. Um, there are a few cons, but a lot of pros in general. All right. So now that we've explained the blocks and the different categories of blocks and how you can apply the blocks to the editor and how you can move things around, how you can make it look like the way you want to make it. Let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four using the sidebar. The sidebar for the Gutenberg editor is located to the right. So we're going to discuss the different features and what's available to you. Okay. So the sidebar is to the right. And as I briefly mentioned in the previous videos that 
Upon editing certain blocks, you will see that the right hand sidebar will change. So the reason why they've entered a lot of different other features into the sidebar is because as you can see, there's only so much that you can put in here. So as you can see here, if I highlight this, I can edit the block type, the heading, heading one, two, three, four, bold, italicize. I can hyperlink it and I can do a few more things. Now, if I were to want to change the alignment, I could not do that over here. So if I highlight this here, so we highlight this here, let me highlight it. You can see text alignment left, center, and to the right. And if I click on advanced, I can add a HTML anchor, which basically lets you link that link. So that's essentially what this is. But there are certain elements here that are kind of redundant. So you just need to be aware of what is redundant and what is not. All right, so if we go to the bulleted list here, you can see a list is a list. So there's, there's not really anything additionally to that. All right, so right here, you can change it from an unordered list, which is basically dots, to an ordered list, which is numbers, as you can see here. So if we change it back to this, we can indent it, and that's what this is about. So we can move it to the right-hand side. So we can move this one to the right and move this one to the left. We can then bold, we can italicize, and there we go. So what I found is that as you begin to edit the blocks, you will learn what other features are available to you. Now that's in terms of blocks, if we go over here, there's blocks and there's document. Document controls the whole page or the whole post. So in other words, you can go through here. You can see that this post is public, meaning everybody else can see this. So if I wanted to change this, I could to private so that everybody cannot see this. Post format, we have standard, we have uh, different post formats for different media types. You can say stick to the top of the blog, so you can move this to the top of the blog. You can click pending review if it's pending. So if you are, say, a writer or you have a writer on your team, you could give them access to the site and you could have them click pending review. And then you come in and you review it. And if it's good to go, then you post it and publish it to public. Permalinks is basically the URL. So if you click here, you're gonna see the domain name with the name of the page. So like I talked about earlier, if you name the page title a certain name, that will be yourdomain.com slash the title name. All right, that's basically what the permalink is. Now this enables you to change that if you choose to do so. But just bear in mind that if you're editing on a live site and you change the permalink and that post or page has been there for maybe weeks or even months, then by changing it, you could potentially lose the traffic that is coming from maybe Google to that page. So you would need to use like a WordPress plugin like Yoast SEO to change that. Then of course you have categories, which allows you to categorize your posts or your pages. You can click add new category if you want to add an additional category. Now, as you can see, there are parent categories. And then if you want to make a category underneath a specific parent category, this will become the child category. So that's there if you want to add categories. And then of course you have tags. Tags allows you to create a similarity between posts or pages. So if you have, let's say five posts that are dealing with a specific, maybe uh, audio soundtrack or 
maybe they're a specific element that is different than categories, then you can enter that here. So for example, let's say that you have a podcast blog and you've interviewed five different people and they are very similar in a specific industry or niche. Then you can put that here and what that will do is if somebody's interested in that niche, they click on that tag and they will be able to see the other five people that you've interviewed in that specific niche or industry. So that's what tags is all about. Featured image is basically the image that people will see before they click on the post or page. So this allows you to enter an image. We have an excerpt and then of course the discussion. So you can allow comments, you can remove comments or remove pingbacks and trackbacks. So if you don't want discussion, you can uncheck that. And if you do want discussion, you can click allow comments. All right, so that's basically it. Block is different, of course. Block pertains to over here. And that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five, common blocks. So there's a category of blocks called common blocks that you saw earlier. So let's go ahead and go over it now. Okay, so up at the top, if we click on the ad block, now remember, most use tends to be the blocks that you use. Now, if we click here, common blocks are different. Common blocks are based upon the most common blocks for WordPress across the board. So these are the common blocks that they have found <laughs> to be common. So we got paragraph, we got image, we got gallery, we've got heading, list, quote, file, audio, cover, and video. So WordPress has figured out that the majority of people will use these blocks. So if we click on paragraph, let's just go in depth. I know I covered a little bit of this in the previous videos, but let's just go further. So I'm going to go ahead and add a paragraph here. So we're going to click paragraph. This is a test. So paragraph is most likely going to be the body of your article. So we can left align, we can center align, we can right align, we can bold, italicize, hyperlink. And there are some more here. So these are basically what we went over earlier, so I'm not gonna go over that now. But over here, we can see paragraph. So we can highlight that. Under the paragraph right-hand side, we have text settings, so you can change the font size. So let's say, we're like, this is too small. So let's change it from normal size to medium size or let's change it to huge and we're like, okay, this is way too big, let's make it small. So that allows you to change the size as such, but you can also change the size like with this. So here's about numbers, so you can do custom. So these are specific sizes, but you can say, okay, I want something in between large and huge. So we got large, in huge. So we can see large is 36, huge is 48. So there's still a gap between these two. So let's say I want something like 40. Drop cap, if we highlight the beginning word or beginning letter and we click on drop cap, this is what you see a lot of times in magazines. So it just makes it a little more professional it looks good, all right? So there's actually studies that show that the human eye, when they see a drop cap, they look upon it and think, oh, this must be legit, or this must be important because it looks like a magazine or a newspaper. Now we have color settings, which allows you to change the background color like this. So if we scroll down, we can see that it changes the background color. And this is something that you could not have done with the 
classic editor. So this is a big pro. So we can change it to this. So you don't want to choose something that's just too much in your face like this unless you know your audience and you know that's the colors that you want to use. Or maybe that fits your brand. Your, maybe your brand colors are pink and blue. You could do something like that. All right, so we're going to choose, let's gray, and we can choose red, blue, like that. And you got custom color, which allows you to pick a color that might not be on this list. So let's say we're going to clear this. When we clear it, it removes the background. We can click custom color and it allows you to choose different colors that may not be on this list. You can do the same with the text color. So we can clear that and let's say we don't like the dark blue. We can click custom color and we can choose a different color that's not on that list, like, like so. And under advanced, you have CSS class, but if you don't know anything about CSS, you can simply ignore that. So that's it when it comes to the paragraphed block. All right, so let's scroll down. And let's go ahead and add a new block. So if we go to common blocks, we have images. So images are, and then we have galleries. So this one down here is an image, so we'll click that. Now image is very self-explanatory. We briefly touched base on this, but all you have to do is simply upload. You can go to media library, or you can insert from an existing URL that is linking to an image. So either of those choices, you can choose, the image will show up, and that's it. So it's very, very self-explanatory. And then of course you have gallery, which is the same, but it's just multiple images versus one image. So let's go here. Let's add a new block, under common blocks. So we went from paragraph, image, gallery. We got heading, which we touched base earlier, so you can change the size, the heading size, and the alignment to the right. We covered list actually earlier, so if we go to list, list doesn't have any settings on the side, it just allows you to create an unordered list, a order list, and do indentations to the left or the right, bold and italicize. So very, very easy to set up. So we went over quotes. We actually created one. Quotes is simple. You just click quote. You enter text. So quotes up here too. So you can change the styles. You can make it large like that or make it small. Typically what you'll notice is quotes typically will look like more like this. They'll have big, they'll, they'll be italicized. And it'll be qu quite obvious to people that that is a quote. You have advanced, but like I say, most of you will not use advanced. So you don't have to even click that. So next off on common blocks, we have, we went through these, we went through these. If you click on audio, very similar, you upload the audio file as an MP3 file and that's it. It's done. It's very, very similar to images. We'll click this here, common blocks. And then we pretty much went through all of these videos, very similar. You just have to have the video in hand on your computer. You upload it to the media library, you upload it, or you get the URL. We have file, which is again, similar. If you click on file, same thing very similar to audio, video, and image, and gallery. And of course, the last one is the cover. So the cover is also very, very similar. And the cover, you typically you wanna have it at the top. So that, and you just upload an image, and that's it. Of course, when you're done, you want to click publish and you're good to go. Hello and welcome to video number six. 
Let's talk about formatting blocks and we'll go to every single block like we did in the previous video. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some blocks. So we're gonna click on the add block here. We're gonna go find the formatting blocks, which are here. So you see there's code, classic, custom HTML, preformatted, pull quote, table, and verse. So most of you, I will say, will not really use this unless you are using maybe an outside third-party service and they say something like, you need to add this code to your website. So some of them are going to say you're going to need to add it to like the header or the footer. In those cases, you might want to hand it off to a webmaster uh, because this would be different. But let's say, for example, that they say add the code to the body of your page. So if that's the case, all you have to do is click on code and then you can add the code here. Now, like I said, this is for advanced users. Most of you will not use that. Next up is the HTML. Now, believe it or not, some of you and a good majority of you will probably encounter something like this. So they might tell you, enter this HTML code into the body of your WordPress site. So if that's the case, click on custom HTML and you simply enter the HTML here. Now, most of you will not know HTML, but that's just how it is. So if I were to write some HTML, and what I'm doing now is I'm basically creating a link. So I'll do HTTP google.com google. So if you have no idea what I just did, you don't have to worry about that. But if I click on preview, what I did was I just created a link. So it's a link. So if you don't know HTML, it may not be applicable to you, but at least you are aware of what this block is. Okay, so next up we have formatting. Under formatting, we have classic. So what this is, is the old classic editor. Now, do not be confused that this is how to convert back to the old classic editor. We're still using Gutenberg, all right? So this just happens to be within a block. So if you like the old classic editor and you wanna utilize it within a block, that's fine, all right? So that's what that is. So you can see what is available to you. Going back, you got formatting, we got pre-formatted. So if I go back here, Okay, so to explain what the pre-formatted block is, like the paragraph block, the pre-formatted block is basically there to display text. Now, unlike the paragraph block, the pre-formatted block basically keeps any spacing or any line breaks exactly as they are entered. So in other words, the pre-formatted block is displayed in sort of a monospace font, making it easy to keep text perfectly aligned. Now the pre-formatted block also includes styling or the ability to add hyperlinks or as short links that a code block doesn't have. So like I said, most of you will not use this, okay? But it's there if you ever have to need it. So going back to formatted blocks, we did these, we did this. So we got pull quote and table. Table is nice if you wanna create a table. So if you want to create a table that has maybe three columns and five rows, you could do three columns, five rows, not 25, five rows, and click create. And there we go. So now we can enter text 
within the table. And this is amazing because this is something that you could not really do in the old classic editor. You would have to find like a plugin and all of that to do that. So this is the old classic editor. So this is really neat. This is something that you would definitely use. Going to formatting, got table, we got verse. So verse is great for poetry. Uh, as you can see, it uses special spacing formats or quote song lyrics. So if you're using something to create song lyrics or poetry, this would be great for you. Moving on, we got just a few more. So we got, we did this one, we did this one, and we haven't done this one. So pull quote, it says it gives special visual emphasis to a quote. So the other ones didn't really allow you to change the color, but it allows you to change a little bit here and there. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to change the actual color. So this is a quote, but the difference is you can change the main color. So you can change the top line and the bottom line. So as you can see, it looks fairly nice and professional like that. So we can keep it red and we can change the text color to something like black, gray, maybe orange, maybe green. Or maybe we can do green up here and red here, something like that, or blue. So that's the main difference. So quote is different than verse, difference than pull quote. So as you can see, what this allows you to do is it changes literally the formatting and makes it look nice. So those are the formatting blocks. Let's move on to layout elements in the next video. Welcome back. This is video number seven, and we're going to talk about layout elements. Okay, so we're going to scroll down and let's add some layout elements. So what does that mean? Well, let's go to it. So we've got buttons, we've got columns, we have media and text, we have more, we have page breaks, we have separators and spacers. So as you can see, what this does is it allows you to add a call to action button. So if you want to link to maybe another page or uh, perhaps a buy button or something else, you can do that. You can do columns. So let's go ahead and make a button, click button. So as you can imagine here, you're going to enter the URL of the website that you want to link to. So in this case, we'll just use google.com. Click apply. So you'll need to click this and that's it. Okay. So next you want to change the text to change the text. You can simply click the mouse here and change the text. So that's the button. Now, of course, you can change the color if you want to. So you can change it to green. You can change it to orange. You can change the text color however you wish, like so. And that's it. So that's a button. So if we go back here and go to Layout Elements, let's click on Columns. So this allows you to add different columns of text. So you can have text over here. And of course, you can have text over here. All right, so that's columns. So next up, we have media and text. So as you can see, this allows you to add images. And let's say we want to have the, the text surrounding the image. If you want to do that, that's good here. So you can add the image, you can add the text, and you can add more text over here. So that's basically what it is. And then, of course, next we have more so more is if you can imagine you went to a new site or you went to a big site that had like articles and information, a lot of times you would see something like read more. So they would click read more and then they would be able to see the other information down below. So that's what read more is and that's what 
that layout element is. So that comes in handy, especially when you have such a long page. So next we have page break. So that's a page break. So that allows you to have several pages. So the only time you would really use that is if you had a very, very long page and you don't want people to have to scroll, 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 scroll. They would simply be able to go to the next page if they choose to do so. So it just makes it easier on the end user. Separator is simply something like a divider like that. And when next we have spacer. So just as it says, this allows you to create spaces in between the blocks. So if you don't want your blocks to be too cluttered and close together, you would use this. Now you can change the height in pixels right here. So let's say I'm thinking, well, that's too much of a space. So I want something like 50. So you can see that you can change the height and that's it. So that covers the formatting blocks. Hello and welcome to video number eight. So if you're not ready for Gutenberg, how do you revert back to the classic editor? So like many people, you may not be ready for Gutenberg. In fact, if you do a search for it, you're going to see a huge amount of negative reviews. And this is simply because of the learning curve. It's not necessarily because it's bad. In fact, if you see, it's clearly a lot better than the classic editor in so many ways. But let's say, for example, you have a client who has a website and they just don't want to go over the learning curve and they're editing the site themselves and they're just frustrated and they're like, I want to go back to the classic editor. If that is the case, then I'm going to give you some options. There are two ways for you to switch back to the old classic editor that you may be used to. Number one, option one is to install the classic editor WordPress plugin. And number two, you can disable the Gutenberg WordPress plugin. Now, bear in mind that option one is what most of you are going to implement. Option two, and the reason why I included this was because some of your clients or some websites that might be outdated, that haven't been updated, may be utilizing the Gutenberg WordPress plugin. But nowadays, from now and on, all of the WordPress updates include the Gutenberg editor built into it. So if that's the case, you will need to use option one. Option two is very obvious. If somebody installed the Gutenberg WordPress plugin, they would simply need to disable it. So what I'm going to do now is to show you how to install the classic editor WordPress plugin. So we're going to hop on over to the website. And to do that, you simply go to plugins. You go to the add new plugin. You go over here, you enter the keyword classic editor. This is the classic editor. As you can see, it enables the previous classic editor and the old style tiny MCE. So you click install now, click activate, and that's it. So now that the old classic editor plugin has been installed, you don't want to go ahead and edit right away just yet. What you need to do is click on settings. So this allows you to customize the editor a little bit. So formatting, you're not going to need to worry about this right here, but by default, it'll convert emoticons like the smiley face and all of that to actual graphics. So as you can see, it says default editor for all users. We got the classic editor, allow users to switch editors. So we've got the block editor here and the classic editor. So you can allow them to switch back and forth. Honestly, if you have clients and they just don't like the editors, I would just disable it, click no, unless they ask you, hey, can you switch it back? Because otherwise it will literally confuse them. So that's it. What we need to do now is simply go back to posts. 
We click on add new. And there we go. So now we are back to the old classic editor. So if you're used to that, you don't have to worry about the blocks or anything like that. We're back to normal. And that's it. That's how easy it is to revert back to the old classic editor. So like I said, option two really is only there if your client is using an old website. But for the majority of the cases, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to utilize option number one. Okay, just want to say congratulations. If you've reached the end of this course, that's great. And now we're going to talk about more editor options. Now, besides the Gutenberg and Classic Editor, there are actually more editor options available commercially. Now, what I mean by that is that there are other plugins that have different editors that look nice. Some of them include Thrive Themes, WP Bakery, and Elementor. Now each has its pros and cons. They have their strengths and weaknesses. And really what it comes down to is which one do you like the best? So you saw Gutenberg. Most of these are very similar to Gutenberg and they utilize blocks, but they just look a lot more nicer and they have a lot more options. So that's really the main difference. So we like Elementor the most because it's super easy and more importantly, super fast. One thing to note is that as you begin to add more plugins to your WordPress site, it will actually slow things down. So what we've done is when we've tested things, we found that Elementor is it doesn't have a lot of it has a lot of features but it doesn't have a lot of coding so it runs really really fast and it won't slow your website down so with that said like i said thrive themes and wp baker are really really good choices so let's go ahead and hop on over to those websites and show you these in action Okay, so let me talk about the differences before we actually install Elementor as a plugin. So if we go up at the top here, we've got WP Bakery Page Builder. And as you can see, between the three of these, there are millions of people that use three of these editors. So it really comes down to which one do you like the best and which one fits your business the best or your website. So as you can see, this one costs $45. And if you scroll down, you can get an idea of what it looks like. Now we've used WP Bakery before and it's really decent. There's a lot of templates in it that are built in. In fact, Thrive Themes and Elementor have the same thing. So for all of these, you'll find templates. You can find and you can look through the templates and if you like them, all you have to do is simply click them and you get the design. So as you can see, the main difference between these and Gutenberg is Gutenberg does not give you templates. You are building everything from scratch. Same goes for the classic editor. So these take your design level to a whole new level. So this is WP Baker. You can see the features here. So there's a lot of things you can do. So to get here is WPBakery.com. Next up is Thrive Themes. That's ThriveThemes.com. Now Thrive Themes is a lot different than just an editor. They have tons of plugins that go into things like opt-in pages. You can create sales pages. You can create funnel pages you can do all sorts of things. So it's not just an editor. So you can see here, you can create forms, you can create all sorts of light boxes, you can do A-B testing, you can do a huge amount. And this is something that a lot of businesses typically use because it has so many different features. So it's very, very feature rich. So as you can see, here are the features right here. Now it's a little more expensive. As you can see, it's 147 for 15 licenses, 
But remember, WP Bakery was about 47 for a single license. It's about 67, which is only $20 more for one license for this. And the next one is Elementor. Elementor is mainly an editor like WP Bakery or Gutenberg. But like I said, the difference is it's more similar to the WP Bakery in the sense that it is an editor and it also allows you to pick and choose templates. And then those templates, you can click a button and then it adds it as a page. So I'm gonna show you that in action. Elementor has a free download, as you can see here. But what I found is Elementor is super fast. It's super easy to create really good looking sites with ease. So you're kind of getting an idea here. Scroll down here. So it says built for professionals from freelancers to agencies. So you can use this, let's say, for example, if you're like a web designer, a website master or anything like that. So this is great to use for your clients. You can also build forms like Thrive Themes to build a list. It's developer friendly, so you can edit the code very, very easily. And it's built with blocks. So I'm gonna show you Elementor in just a second. So we'll go back over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate the classic editor because I don't want that. What I do want, I'm gonna click on add new. We're gonna go type in Elementor. So that's Elementor. Make sure we spell it right like that. So immediately upon entering the keyword, we can see that here, Elementor Page Builder. Now bear in mind they have a pro version which you can buy, but you can do a lot with their free editor. Just the free level itself, there's a lot of really good features. And that's why I like it. And that's why I feel comfortable with recommending that to you. Now, as you can see here, it says, welcome to Elementor. You can watch that. We're gonna create our first page. So we click on this. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see your website. So if you have widgets on the right side or the left side or the header at the top, you're gonna to see that as well. Now, this is the Elementor editing box. So all you have to do is simply drag a widget here from over here, or you can click the plus sign similar to the Gutenberg and add a section. So we have intersections, we have headings, we have text editors, images, videos, buttons, spacers, dividers, Google Maps, icons. So as you can see, Gutenberg does not have Google Maps or icons. So there's more. You got image box, you have icon boxes, you have star ratings, you have image galleries, image carousels, icon lists, progress bar. So let's say for example that this were to be an opt-in page. So if we clicked progress bar and we dragged it over here and we dropped it, there we go. That's it. It's super easy and of course you have the settings over here that you can edit. And of course I can go back over here and click plus. Let's say we want a section here. Let's have two columns. So we click plus and we can go back over here. Let's add maybe heading here. And then of course we'll go back over here and we can add maybe an image. So you can see that it's actually a lot easier than Gutenberg when it comes to editing. So that's a free version. Now, let's say for example that you want to utilize one of their templates. So if that's the case, I'm just gonna delete these here like that. I'm gonna click on this folder here. So click on the folder. What it's gonna do is it's going to allow you to enter their library of templates. So you can see which ones are free and which ones are on the pro level. The pro level has this little icon that says pro. You can't use that unless you have the pro level plugin. So you have to purchase it. But I tell you it's definitely worth it. Now as you scroll down, you can see blocks actually. So blocks over here and then we have pages over here 
and then you have templates over here. So blocks essentially are different media or different blocks or areas that you can add. So for example, you can, let's say I like this, I'm going to add this and I'm going to add this and then I'm going to add this. So that's basically the method of blocks. It's very similar to Gutenberg. And then of course you have pages, which are the templates. So if you scroll down here, there's all sorts of really cool looking templates and designs that really can take your site to a whole new level to make it look professional. So let's say for example that we're selling something and that we want to, we like this one here or yeah, let's, let's do this one. Okay. Never mind. That's pro. So let's scroll down and find something that we really like. So let's say for example that we're editing our web website and it's still in construction mode, but it's coming soon and it's coming in two weeks. If that's the case, let's say we like this one here. We, okay, that's pro. Okay. We'll just do this one here. Okay. Click insert. That's all you have to do. You just wait a few seconds and there you go. So it will insert that template in here and all you have to do is change the text. You can change the images and there you go. So that's Elementor. I highly recommend that you can upgrade to the pro version, but as you can see, utilize the free version first. If you feel like you need to go pro, go pro. If you don't stick with the free. So I hope you enjoyed this course. You can see the differences between Gutenberg, the classic editor, WP Bakery, Thrive Themes, and Elementor.